Hey folks, Quilly Team here and welcome to a brand new Let's Play for Rib World. We are going to be playing for a victory we haven't done before. The Arco Nexus victory type, which admittedly doesn't sound like the most thrilling thing. We build up our colony to a value of about 350,000 uh, wealth. We'll get an offer to sell our colony. We will then start a new colony with up to five of our colonists from the existing place. And I think we only get to bring like seven pieces of gear with us and it resets our um, technology tree and then we do that a couple more times and then we get a map to an Arquinexus and then I think we've got to fight our way through that and some mechs and stuff like that. So it is going to be about building a relatively wealthy colony multiple times and hopefully playing for a long run and hopefully having a pool of characters that lasts until the end. I'm going to very briefly show you the mods that I'm running over here. These mods that I'm running are basically just quality of life and user interface things. There is effectively nothing that changes gameplay. There's technically a couple of little micro exceptions. So uh, you can pause the video here. I'm now going to scroll down. You can pause the video here, maybe take a screenshot and I scroll down just for the end over here. Um, I'm not going to talk about all these. The one thing that does change the gameplay ever so slightly, I do have to tweak, tweak galore here, which will let me deconstruct debris on the map instead of having to attack it because I hate it. Um, I also got my no job offers and no shelf quality uh, mods running here because honestly, I just think that that's slightly nicer way to run the game. And other than that, I guess animal controls gives you the ability to choose the uh, to, to restrict the diet for animals, which you can't do in vanilla. I think everything else is basically just user interface stuff uh, to save me a few clicks here and there and to make the game maybe look a little bit nicer. So we're going to go ahead and start a new colony. I've been thinking about this and I want to go with the Rich Explorer start because I don't know. Have we done a Rich Explorer start in RimWorld before? I'm not entirely certain. Uh, so we're going to start with one person. We are going to start with a bunch of extra stuff over here, but only starting with one person is going to make things a little bit tricksy. But this person is our archaeologist. They are interested in finding the Arco Nexus. This is going to be our story that we're going to be telling ourselves here. So sort of a wealthy Indiana Jones type person is what I'm going to go for. I'm going to play with Randy Random because I found that it's uh, much more interesting to play that way because you really don't know what to expect. I want to play at a fairly high difficulty. I was thinking about doing losing is fun, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to back down one level. We're going to go to blood and dust over here because I'm hoping to be successful in this run. So I don't want to go too hard, although this is going to be still be very challenging. Certainly, um, I guess our seed is going to be orange. Sure, that's fine. Generating world. I'm leaving at 30% coverage. I don't think like 30%. We still get tons of land to operate on. Some people insist on generating 100% land form. I don't I don't think that there's much of to gain over there. What we'd probably like to do, what I figure for our, our settlement, I'm not going to go for anything extreme. I'm not necessarily going for a tundra start or desert start. I'll probably be relatively temperate um, because, you know, we we the challenge here is going to be the growth and the repeated growth. So I don't want the landscape to be too harsh to start off with. I would like to settle relatively near the purple house and the yellow tent here because these are natural trading partners for us. So if we could find a spot to do that and we do have some toxic people over here, but otherwise maybe settling in the middle of these two, that's probably a relatively temperate area. What else might? Oh, sorry, that's the wrong house. Yeah, the uh, the blue barns over here are actually one of the hostile factions. My bad. Maybe over here near to the coast between those two. That looks kind of nice. Uh, you know what wouldn't be too bad? It's right over here now. This is a desert. Well, it's arid shrubland. We would get year ground growth, which is nice, but otherwise it will be fairly dry. Um, I also wouldn't mind some amount of mountainous stuff. Although the flat's not the worst. It does give you a lot of flexibility for building, but I like being along a road because you can travel a lot faster. OK, that's oh, the air is one possibility. And then what do we have? Oops over here trans like moving around the world map would be slower because there's no roads over here but a tempest forest is fairly comfortable it's not year-round growth but it's pretty good if you go into the tropical rainforest as well we get more diseases which is actually kind of scary with the solo start because some bad things could happen yeah um hmm it's also flat although i could go we couldn't oh that's impassable we could go here where there's a river or maybe just here in mountainous I mean, there's pros and cons to the mountainous starts, certainly. A lot of times we can find a much better way to defend. Of course, we do have to worry about insect spawns from popping up on us. We go even further inland, just go small hills. Granite and limestone, two very hard stones. It'd be nice to have like granite and marble or something, you know, just to 
have a pretty stone. Maybe I go here. The, the, the travel to the blue house faction, the Lelium, wouldn't be too bad. Maybe we give the oh caves. Oh man, that's freaky deaky. Oh, probably full of bugs to start off with. I don't know. Maybe we go even closer here. We go right here. Small hills. All right, let, let's do that. Um, but did, I'm not going to. I could make a larger map to start off with because this, this is actually not too bad to go there. I don't think I will in this case. I think I'll leave the terrain default. I am going to create a custom ideology here. Um, create custom. We are going to go with an Arcist origin, the Arcist of the true gods, because we're going to look into that. We are going to go transhumanist because one of the things I was thinking is when we sell our base and we have to restart, we can't bring a lot of gear with us, but presumably we can bring fully transmog people with us. So ideally, if we could get five really heavily modified people and bring them with us, that would be quite cool. I'm not going to do anything too crazy. Uh, you know, we're not going to necessarily abuse like the, the blind side or pain of virtue, anything like that. I think we'll probably do the human primacy here because it unlocks the production specialist, which is really, really good. Also, bonding disapproved is actually kind of useful. While someone has bonded with an animal, they get a mood boost. But if something happens to the animal, it's real bad. We also get a research specialist from the transhumanist. Um, and then do I want to take another trait as well? Because you can only have two specialists, and those two will do fine. Um, I mean, the shooting specialists and things like that aren't bad. I think you can get from supremacists, yeah, shooting specialists. But we only get two specialists allowed, right? So maybe we just run transhumanist human primacy. Oh, you know what I'll do? I'll go uh, proselyzer because um, then we can more easily convert people to our belief system. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, unless we don't care about having a mixed colony. No, I'll do that. Okay, so Creative Arco Technology. I like the name just fine. I think we'll leave these as mostly a default. Um, I'm not going to boost the research speed, although I'm very tempted. Maybe, do we, allow, do we allow the organ harvest? I would certainly make the game a little bit easier because we could organ harvest and then sell them. Let's do that. I won't change this. Um, I will do the thing where I remove the um, the outfits from the rolls. Obviously, it makes things a little happier. Um, we could keep capes in. Capes occupy the same place as the duster. A duster is a better piece of gear, but a cape isn't bad. And that would be a way to satisfy things. And a cape doesn't conflict with any useful um, equipment. One of the things with like the hats, for example, is always, well, that'll conflict with a helmet later on. You know, I tell you what, for style points, Oh, can I not add cape? I thought maybe maybe I was just seeing cap and I was thinking, oh, no, you can have a cape. And you can have a cape. And you can have a cape, but the leader can't. Huh. OK, tell you what, we'll do that then. It will, maybe we'll keep both dusters and capes. These three rolls will have that. The Make Flame, I think I'd rather a different name for you. Menu Master, Menu One, the Build Brain. You know what? I like the Maker. And then we put the cape back in here. Maker, the Thinker, the Converter, yes. And the Archic Hominid. Um, the name stands out, but you know what? That's probably okay too. All right, Funeral is fine. I don't want Animal Sacrifice. We are going to add a few parties. We'll do the Sky Lantern. We'll add, um, and we'll add a dance party. And I'm gonna edit this. I want any time is fine for this. I'm gonna want one of them maybe for some faction goodwill because it would be great to have some allies built that way. And I think we need allies with someone to get the offer to sell the colony. And then for the rest, it's gonna be the option of getting some recruits, which might be extra important um, with the fact that we're only starting with one person. Buildings, pillows, architecture, silicon, that's good, relics. Um, we can also bring one relic with us from place to place. That doesn't count. I think what would be the thing to do. What is this? Oh, an insanity lens. Um, let me remove you. Oops. We're going to add in one charge rifle relic. And then we can bring this with us from place to place. That would actually be kind of nice. Um, I think I'll just remove this. Well, although... Noble. Oh, Noble's all for the melee weapons. 
I mean, I guess it's fine. Most of our people will have ranged weapons. If we do get a brawler and we give them a, a fancy melee weapon. Now nah, I'll just remove it. No venerated animals for now. Xenotypes, da da da, the hairs. Yeah, that's all good. Okay, I think I like this. I think I like this a lot. Let's go next. Now let's go and make our person. Now one of the mods I am running is, I can't remember what it's called. It's better random or something like that. It lets you set filters for your randomizing over here so that instead of rolling over and over and over by hand, you just set a few rules for what you've got. I'm gonna exclude Gourmand and Pyromaniac because they can be extremely problematic for especially one of your starting pawns, especially our single starting pawn here, because even if they're in a good mood, they might randomly go on a food eating break or um, a fire starting break regardless. I'm also gonna make sure they don't start with any real health problems, that their age is um, relatively reasonable for our start. And I'm gonna require that they have a passion for shooting to get started. We're gonna hit the randomize here. So it just rolled nine times for us. So it's not too bad. Oh, we're gonna start with Gojus and Ambrosia. Careful shooter, too smart, wimp. Huh. Oh, I actually, you know what? I probably do wanna make sure that I have a, a socially passionate person for our leader, because, or for our starting person, because they're gonna be responsible for recruiting people. So we might add that to the filter over here. Animal passion does nothing for us. Cooking doesn't do anything for us because as transhumanists, we're perfectly happy to eat Nutri-Paste. So that's actually not important at all. So not a winner. Two smarts quite nice for the global learning factor. Yeah, they break more easily, but it's not necessarily the end of the world. Careful shooter has pros and cons. Um, Wimp. Wimp's actually weirdly okay normally because, yeah, they're going to go down right away when they get hurt, but that also takes them out of the um, line of fire, generally speaking, and will make it less likely that they die. However, as a solo start, we really need our person to not instantly fall down when they get shot one time. That's really bad. I think I think Wimp is fine once you get to a larger army set, but bad early on. So I'm going to say this is no good. I will go into the filter and I will ask that they have... Um, at least some passion and social, because I think that's going to be important. Let's roll again and see who we get. We got Hope over here. Hope's a good name for our solo person here. Apocalypse Survivor Ranger, Misandrist, Trigger Happy Tough. Yeah, Trigger Happy sort of pros and cons, depending on what kind of weapon we give them. Tough is fantastic. Misandrist might be a bit of a problem. Also, these skills are... We might need someone, and I'm going to be extra picky because we are starting solo. Um, I'm going to make sure they don't have to have passion for it, but I want to make sure they start with at least four levels of construction so that they have the ability to build everything, because I think that's going to be important. This one take 53 rolls for this person. Greedy is fine. Maybe a little tricky early on, but we'll try to rush to get you a fancy bedroom. Fast Walker is fantastic. Um, the cooking passion doesn't matter. Artistic doesn't matter. Plants actually kind of nice. The construction double passion's nice, and we've got the social. I think we're going to go ahead over here, although I kind of like the name Hope, so we're going to rename you to Hope, and then we'll change that to your nickname. Oh, no, it is going to use your first name. Good. So, yeah, Hope Allison. I like this. We Oh, should we have given you a Xenotype right away? No, but that is going to be something else that carries over from colony to colony so we can have heavily cyborged up heavily genetically modified people to effectively carry more kind of value between colonies but i'll start with a baseline human and let's see what our map looks like what are we at 13 minutes in to the start of the game honestly that's not too bad i think so we'll let the crash landing happen good 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 let me do a little uh just a little safety save here good my other little test runs and what's our map look like well, we have a naturally sort of maybe defended a defensive area over here. Do I see a danger out oh, right over here? OK, danger box out of the way. I like this. Um, let's take a look at the fertile terrain that we might have to work with. No huge blob in the center. This one's possibly convenient. And then much more centralized. We have this, although it's not very big. Our growth period here was, what, 50 out of 60? That's not bad. Effectively full, full year growth. Maybe we get a frost kill in the middle, or more likely what happens is mostly the growth just sort of pauses in the middle of the year. Um, just build, planting rice on this patch here is probably going to be enough to sustain hope. That's not too shabby. We've got some starting construction over here, but probably... Not, I don't know if this is convenient enough to, to expand into our starting base. I don't think it does too much for us. Um, and this is muddy over here. So building walls around this lake is actually kind of annoying. Um, hmm. 
I like usually when you get your fertile area in a place that's naturally going to be within your defensive walls because people will come and burn down your crops, which is more than a little annoying. We might have to accept that this might not be in our walls for a while. I feel like we start kind of building here initially and set up our initial planting here and maybe have like maybe wall kind of this area off as our initial base area. And then with the plans to expand the walls out to there, uh, once we need more farming. I think that's probably what we have to think about. Let me um, just hit the, the button to quickly allow everything across the map, which might include some random wood and stuff or something on the edge of the map, which can be a little annoying, but it's hardly the end of the world. Before I forget, let's quickly set up a growing zone over here. Do, 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 do. Also, I have to remember to set it to rice. Don't leave it to potatoes, Quill. Oops, um, cancel. Uh, potatoes. I mean, potatoes are fine, but this is nice, rich soil, right? With the enhanced fertility, right? 140% fertility. Potatoes only get 60% of the benefit from fertility. Uh, no, sorry. 40% of the benefit from fertility. So good fertility is kind of wasted on potatoes. They don't give a crap about the terrain. It helps help them a little, but basically nothing. Whereas rice and corn, for example, have 100%. Therefore, they'll get the full benefit from it. We're going to do rice early on so we can cycle our harvest as quickly as possible and get that going on. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the auto home zone and I'm going to make sure to turn on the automatic rebuilding of areas. And did it home zone around my planted area? It did. Okay, so let me clear that because we don't want a bunch of extra planting or a bunch of cleaning. And I might home zone exactly where the growing area is just for firefighting, but I'm not going to worry about it too soon. See, if we set up our house here, it's not really close to the crops, which I don't love. Unless I just go and build the initial base right here, like the initial building, I should say, right here. That's not terrible. We want to get something up and running ASAP. We don't want anything too big. We can just do this. And then with the plan of expanding a little bit over here, because we do have a natural wall. Or maybe we don't. Maybe we just sort of expand this way and around this crop. And then we're closer to here. Yeah, we'll see what happens sort of as we flow. Hope, go ahead and equip this charge rifle. I'm not running the, um, well, what's it called? Equipment manager mod, which I do love. I love it so much, um, and it lets people just grab weapons on their own. The issue with the Equipment Manager mod is it does require simple sidearms, and I think simple sidearms is a great mod that doesn't break the game in any way, but I'm trying to be as vanilla as possible for this run, so I decided against running that. Um, let me issue a little bit of Harvest Fully Grown over here just to cut down a few trees that we'll use for construction. And hope, I'm gonna do my standard thing. Ooh, yeah, you don't have doctoring skill, which is a bit unfortunate, but we'll see. I don't have to worry about childcare yet. That can be a priority. Um, cooking, I'm actually gonna leave it at one. Mostly that's just gonna be for butchering here. And grow is gonna be on a two, plant cuts are gonna be on a two. We'll leave everything else at a three here. And that's gonna be okay. So you'll go equip that weapon and then you'll go and uh, start planting the rice immediately, which I think is important. Okay. Unpause here and let's plan. Let's plan a wooden structure. Do I just want to make like a 13 by 13 area right away? We have we know that Hope wants a fancy bedroom too. Like right now, her mood's going to be fine because low expectations, initial optimism. But she's got this minus eight, greedy for an impressive bedroom. So we will have to plan that kind of early. What I'll do is sort of plan this construction. If I go, so 13 is up to here. Oh, that, no, that's a little annoying. Pull you down by 11, do this, do that. I'm gonna leave the corners off for now because uh, we don't need them to enclose this room. And this saves us a tiny little bit of material and a tiny little bit of time to get started. So I'll do this and do this. What I could do is take one of these corners and make it into a room, but I think I'll probably just build the room, say off of this as its own thing. It's gonna be a little bit weird to have the bedroom be such a early priority, especially in a single person start, but I think that's gonna be required. We are gonna make a stockpile zone over here. Then I'm gonna do a dumping stockpile over here, sure. Um, I'm gonna make this a higher priority, uh, just preferred, higher priority than the normal stockpile. And the raw resources, I'm going to turn all these on, except for plant matter. 
There you go. Because normally they'd be putting the steel and silver in the stockpile. It doesn't have to be going to be outside. Wood does decay if it's exposed, but uh, it takes a long time to do it. So I think it's fine to store the wood outside as well. But yeah, most important thing is to plant that. Now, we did start with a pupper crystal. However, hope here doesn't really have any animal skill. Keeping crystal trained is going to be a challenge. And it's not, it's not something we have the skill for. It's not something we have the time for. I think, and I know, I know this is going to distress some people. I think the smart thing to do is to immediately butcher crystal. I'm sorry, but I think it's the way it has to go. It'll take us a little bit to set up the um, like a little butcher's table and stuff. Okay, Crystal's going to be eating our packed survival meals early. Unless I just turn off Crystal's food rules completely and they just starve. No, I don't want to do that. That's too cruel. I think we have to... I think we have to butcher Crystal. If we started, if we had passion or skill in the animal training category, then maybe I would do it. But there's a very good chance we're just going to fail over and over and over while trying to train you to do some hauling to be useful. I'm, I'm really sorry, but I think we have to do that. Then it'll be a proper solo start because it'll only be hope. It's, an, it's, it's a cruel, cruel, cruel rim world out there. But that's the way it goes sometimes. So yeah, I did want to rush this. No build a structure, we'll get the beds. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're going to put the slaughter. Oh, oh, we don't need the butcher table. Yeah, <sighs> I'm so sorry. Look away. Look away from my shame. But it had to be done. I think it's I absolutely 100% think it, 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 believe it was the right move to do. We can butcher for meat. Well, we're actually not going to be able to use the meat for a while. I guess we keep the leather around until we go and get our neutral paint dispenser which also requires power. Um, we're not going to make any use of the raw ingredients. Same thing with the rice, but at least that can be stockpiled for a long time. Even not refrigerated, I think it lasts 40 days, I think. And corn, I think, is 60 days, all without refrigeration. It's a long time. We don't need a fridge for ages. Yeah, go ahead and cut a few extra trees because it had that higher priority. Luckily, you do have the plant passion, which is going to be very useful. And the plant skill is used for cutting down stuff, I think, a little bit faster. Maybe getting a better yield out of it, too. Which is going to be very handy for us. Um, and I don't know how much we need for heal root. I think it's a skill of eight. So it probably won't take hope too long to get there. All right. Let's go build our home. We will home zone it. At least I could clear the corners. We'll want them later on. Oh, that's for first night. Yeah. I sleep outside, but that's just the reality of it. I could have prioritized getting a tiny little hut up first. You know, and delayed the uh, the planting, but I think this is the right way to do it. Obviously, she's going to be upset, sleeping on the ground and the cold and outside, but I don't think that's going to bring down her mood too much. Between these two numbers over here, it should hopefully counter it. And then for tomorrow night, we should hopefully have a bed for her. It won't be her fancy bedroom, but a bed, a table, and a chair. Once these walls are up, I think is going to be the priority. What kind of wildlife is out there? There's a lynx. Who could hunt us a timber wolf and a warg actually this is the warg over here which is freakishly close an attack mode on there if anything comes at you and that's that now the roof is going to happen perfect cut down those two that's going to be okay all right so furnishings yeah we'll go and get you a bed immediately so you won't sleep on the ground and ooh, look at the archist the techist style over here very nice um, there's a good chance that right over here near this crop field is where we're gonna have our fridge. So and probably our nutrient paste dispenser. So I'll put the table. Um, yeah, we'll just put it here. We can always move it after if I'm not entirely happy with it. And we'll plant a dining chair. That's going to be OK. Roof building is a very high priority, so she's going to keep working on that first. And we'll get down her furnishings. And then probably we have to push towards power to get our food situation up and going. And it'd be nice to get a light in here. Right, we got some alpacas. Wonder what Randy is going to send to us. The worst thing that Randy could send to us right away, and I shudder to even say this out loud. The worst thing Randy could send to us immediately would be a disease on hope, which I think if you're playing a Cassandra classic, there's a buffer window where you can't just randomly get sick for the first little bit of the game, but Randy doesn't follow those rules, and we could just immediately die to a plague. Something like that could happen. 
Okay, you're in a hauling phase, which is great. Bedroom unhappiness. I know it's not fancy. Deal with it. Let's I don't know where the sweet spot for setting up our power is. You know, if we go and mine this, I could build our windmill over here. Um, overlapping our dumping stockpile, which would be fine. There's just fewer trees we're gonna have to worry about keeping cut down if we build it right over here. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Tap, tap, tap. Yeah, you don't have any mining skill. Oh, yeah, that's a little annoying. Oh, you're also gonna be pretty bored. Uh, I mean, you can just watch the sun, do different things like that, but let's get you to just quickly build this horseshoe pin so that recreation is available to you. All right, you're gonna eat, you're gonna sleep. Oh, you're gonna play some horseshoes. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so the next plan for power. I mean, we could go and do the wood fire generators, but those of you who have watched this before know for whatever reason, I'm not keen on them. I think I, I, I know it's kind of annoying to keep full, blah, 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 blah. I want to set up our renewable power pretty quickly. Um, I guess I could move it. Hang on, if I went, put you here. I, I guess no matter what, we're adding just kind of as much tree area as possible. But this area here is at least fully clear. So we'll do that. Let me go and uh, repaint this zone over here. And yeah, once this is set up, we'll have to put, set the you know, auto cut trees rule. In fact, I may as well go immediately and tell you to chop these trees. But yeah, we'll have to set the uh, the automated rule up. So Hope Smooth is going to be a little bit better. At least she's comfortable, currently satisfied, spacious interior. Yep, that's that's nice, you know. Doesn't count as a barracks. Technically, Hope has her own bedroom currently. I think it counts as a bedroom. Yeah, Hope's bedroom, despite having furniture. But of course, yeah, you can have tables and chairs. In that, I don't know if it'll change once we set up workshops, if it'll still consider her bedroom versus a barracks. It might. Okay, chop that stuff down. I think you do get XP while cutting down trees. Yep, there you go. That's good. I need defense, I know. We'll probably build a little trap corridor here pretty quickly. But I think I want to get the power up first. Okay, right, construct. Uh-huh, we got some components in there. Perfect, good. Okay, so then after that, our thing will be to run power into our building. I guess if I do this, you're going to be chopping down that. Unless it's smoothed. Yeah, okay. I can smooth this. And then we can run power through it. I'm not running wall lights, although I considered making it an exception. I don't think I am. Yeah, no. We might still add it in, because wall lights are pretty cool, and they don't really break vanilla. There you go. We got lighting inside the room, and yeah, just smooth those, because I think we're going to be putting our nutrient paste dispenser over here, and it needs power. Not to mention, perhaps, the refrigeration part of it. But okay. And then here, we need auto-cut, auto-cut blocking plants, and cut now, because that is in the way. Temperature is 22, so that's good. We will need batteries. That is probably going to be the first thing I research is battery technology. We'll put that in a queue. We don't have a research thing yet, but that's okay. Um, I think we set up a nutrient paste dispenser now. So, okay, let's plan the room that will be the refrigerator. I think I'm going to offset it, and I don't want it to be too big. You know what? What is this? Nine to here? That's ten to here. That's nine to there. Hang on a sec. I'm arbitrarily picking a sort of a 9 by 9 by 9 size. Um, now the nutrient dispenser counts as a wall. Okay, so we'll have to tear down that wall. Let me build the outer wall first, then we'll put it there. And yeah, I don't want through traffic. But if I do this... Might be fine. I mean, I, I I don't want through traffic just for temperature control later on. I could not build this door. I suppose I can build it because then I can I can forbid it, right? Yeah, I can put the allow on there if I'm not happy with people walking through it. Okay, so we'll build this up so then I can tear this down. Still have this count as internal. And we'll put the nutrient paste dispenser over there. And yes, we're going to want to run the power cable that way. Do I want to plan for the refrigeration immediately? I don't know. If, I don't think we can trust refrigeration yet. This is actually a good little tucked in place maybe for some batteries. Consider that. 
Okay, let's make sure to expand our home area. That's something I'm always going to forget to do. I like the manual home area stuff, or we leave it on automatic and then I constantly sort of trim it back. That's a possibility as well. I'm going to plan that because we're going to expect there to be a roof in this area. Although, I don't know if you can walk through batteries. I think you can. You can. Back in the day, you couldn't walk through most RimWorld furniture. Now you can. The nutrient paste dispenser is an exception because it does count as a wall. Yeah, I think that's going to be okay. Yeah, we will be putting refrigeration in here later. I guess I don't need this corner. And save ourselves a little bit of time. A little bit of material. It's less about the material in this case, and mostly about the time involved. Oh, I might want to fence around here to stop critters from eating my, my grain. That's probably a smart idea. It'd be nice if the alpacas left first. So as I could do a little hunt on them. Uh, I don't think we need a gate unless we were penning animals in here, but it's nice, so I'll build it. It'll feel good. It's actually a nice little cottage we're building, maybe. I don't know. Be better with maybe smaller rooms. Again, we'll build her a proper bedroom soon. I, th I think I might just tuck it in here. What's this wall? Steel wall. And we'll probably deconstruct that for the material, actually. All right, another meal done. Cutting bushes. Oh, yeah, and away from this. Uh, I suspect we might need to chop down some trees. I have to sneeze. Of course I do. Okay, I got to the mute button in time. Hooray! <laughs> we haven't had anything happen, right? He hasn't thrown anything our way yet. I mean, it's only our... Is this only our third day? I'm not sure. Oh, Psychic Soothe right away. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, the alpacas have moved out, which is good. Poor Crystal here is just decaying. I Listen... I don't want to hear about it. It's 100% the right thing for us to do, even though it, it hurts a little. Okay, done that. That's great. So now your next job is going to be to build a nutrient-based dispenser like so. And this will all count as a wall, boxing all this in, keeping this as a separate room for refrigeration, which is going to be great. And yeah, Hopefully you have enough metal. Oh, yeah, you still got plenty stored over there. That's going to be good. Oh, you botched. Oh, yeah, that'll be up in time for the rice. I guess your construction's only a six. Although still, that's kind of disappointing because that's definitely a material waste that I'd rather not have. Done, and then we'll build some hoppers. Now, um, is there a rule when someone comes and makes a nutrient paste meal? Is there a way to know which one of these hoppers it's going to use first? Is there something with the position? Because here's what I'd like to do. I would like to make one hopper that's meat only and that gets used preferentially. Because again, if we don't have refrigeration, our rice is going to still last. Again, I think it's 40 days without refrigeration. Long time. But meat only lasts two or three days. So if we get any meat, I would love for that to get used first. I mean, I can set a priority here, but that's just for like for stockpiling rules. Like if, say, this hopper, the one that's closest to like the output over here is the thing that gets used first, then I would make this one meat only so that if we have any meat and I put it the highest priority, right? I'd put it critical priority meat only. So if we have any meat, it gets put there first so that the nutrient paste meals consume that first. But I don't know. I wonder, maybe I'll try Googling it between episodes to see if it is, but it might just be random in which case then, then we just can't do that. Then if we get meat, well, either A, we hope it gets eaten first, or B, once this becomes a freezer, then it's not going to matter. And that's the thing. It only matters for the first little bit. Although, if we could set up a priority, then it would be quite important because we could go without a freezer for a very long time. A very long time. All right, your Hollymar wood, what we need to do as well is zone, stockpile zone in here, which is going to be preferred. These are set to important, right? Yeah, okay. So preferred for any food... Probably not kibble or hay. I guess the raw plant matter is fine. Um, I suppose herbal medicines should be in here for now. If we've got any, which actually I should. Right before we end the episode here. If I zoom out to some amount, let's say here. Click you, so it's selecting all the herbal medicines on the screen. Harvest fully grown. So we're going to get some of that because if we get a minor injury, I don't want to use our glitter world medicine for a minor uh, injury. So we're going to do that. We are 35 minutes into this episode. This seems like a great time for us to put in a cut. 
Um, I'm really sorry about Crystal. I'm sorry about the puppy. But I still think it was the right decision to do. Our base, uh, initial base setup is nice. We're going to want to set up a little bit of manufacturing and we want to get our research table down ASAP. Hope you don't have passion for research, right? Yes, yeah, so research is going to be awfully slow to get started, but it's going to have to be OK. Oh, I guess I can make Hope's bedroom to improve our mood, although she's in a pretty good mood as is. Again, we've got some some modifiers. Slept in the cold is a thing. I guess one of the things if we get a bedroom, we can put a heater in there rather than heating up this entire space. Yeah, that might be the way to go. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up here. Folks, thanks a lot for watching. I've been excited to play some RimWorld again. Uh, I'm going to be recording a, several episodes today and kind of keeping them around. I think I might. I don't know if these will go up on YouTube in parallel with their Dwarf Fortress run or just after. So I don't know what the timing is for it yet, but I'm certainly excited to be playing some RimWorld. I hope you are, too. What a glorious game this is. And we're going to go for a victory condition we haven't done before. If you're new to the channel, of course, subscribe. And in general, hitting like and leaving a comment is so good for the YouTube algorithm. That would be much appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.